In this video, we're going to look at how we use the measurement of rates to determine what the rate law is for a given chemical reaction. So we have our standard chemical reaction here that we've been using throughout this series. We have uh, reactants A and B, products C and D, all of their stoichiometric coefficients indicated by nu A, nu B, etc. And we have our uh, proposed rate law, which is that the reaction rate as a function of time is equal to the rate constant times every reactant to some exponent, uh, which is to be determined. So these have to be determined empirically, as I said, which means just by measurement. Uh, there's no way to know what MA and MB are until you actually do the experiment. So if you do the experiment and you have some data on reaction rates, how can you use that data from reaction rates to determine what the rate law is, which we usually just mean is how do we determine what these exponents are on the orders for A and B. Okay, so there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, one would be to measure just initial rates. So we have what would be called the method of initial rates. And in the method of initial rates, you would basically keep A constant and then vary B, or keep B constant and vary A, and then use what we're going to de describe here to calculate what these uh, values are going to be. And the other would be the method of isolation, in which you would flood the reaction with one reactant or the other. So if, for example, if we uh, use a, lo a lot of uh, reactant A in the reaction, we flood a ton of it into the reaction, then it's going to be, its concentration is basically constant through time because it's only going to, only a little of it, it's going to react with B. So that makes K times A to the MA basically a constant and that makes it at a new effective rate constant. And you can do vice versa to determine it for A. But uh, in either case, what you're basically doing is just setting up a situation to where you have an effective rate law where you have V times some constant equals uh, your single species to its power. And then it'll use the math that we described below. So this uh, method of initial rates is just using V of T equals zero and some cleverly chosen concentrations to calculate that method of isolation uses A being much, much greater in concentration than B, and vice versa. Okay, so how do we go about doing this? <clears throat> so for example, if we did have the method of isolation where A is much, much bigger than B, then what we have is <clears throat> A would basically be constant throughout the reaction. So therefore, K times A to the MA is a constant times a constant taken to a constant, which is then approximately constant. And this new rate constant we can define as, for example, say K prime. Okay, so now we have our reaction rate V of T equals K prime times the concentration of B to the power MB. All right, so we're going to do this experiment with two different concentrations, uh, with B, B1 and B2. So we'll have two setups where we have V1 of T equals K prime concentration of B1 to the MB. V2 of T equals K prime times B2 to the MB. And if this were, we could also accomplish this the same way by the method of initial rates if we use these V1 of 0, V2 of 0, and um, we use the same concentration of A in both cases, because what we're going to end up doing is dividing these reactions. So really these end up working out to be the same kind of calculation that we're going down here. It's just two different ways of achieving a constant for the concentration of the other uh, species. Okay, so those are those two values. We have V1, V2, uh, B1, and B2. So uh, we notice that we have K prime in both of these here. So if we divide both of the sides by, divide this one by B1 to the MB, divide that one by V2 to the 
uh, B2 to the MB. Then you have K prime equals this divided by that, K prime equals this divided by that. So they're equal to each other through K prime. So what we have then is V1 of T over B1 to the MB equals V2 of T over B2 to the MB. All right, then we can rearrange these, multiply both sides, uh, and divide them by whatever values you need to get to this rearrangement here, which is you have V1 over V2 equals B1 over B2. And both of these are to the power MB, so I can factor that out and take that to the outside there. All right, now I can take the natural log of both sides. I can take natural log of V1 over V2 equals. And when I take the natural log, I can pull the exponent out in front. So I have MB times natural log of B1 over B2. All right, now I just divide both sides by this logarithm, and I have isolated MB by itself. So what I have is that the reaction order in B is the natural log of rate 1 divided by rate 2 divided by the natural log of concentration of B1 times concentration of B2. So as long as I've constructed things in a way where I'm measuring the rate when there is a constant uh, concentration of A between these, two, uh, between these two reactions, then I can use this formula here and determine the reaction order in B. And then once I've determined B, I can either do the same thing for A, where I have measure it with a constant, constant concentration of B, or I, at that point I know MB, so I only have one variable left. But you might potentially have other reactants or other variables that you're concerned about. So uh, maybe it's just best to go about it uh, trying to do the experiment to uh, do it the same way for A as you did for B, uh, keeping the concentration of B constant and measuring the rate as you vary the concentration of A. Okay, and then one last caveat which we're going to discuss before uh, leaving this video is that this uh, type of, these types of methods here is you're assuming that the reactants are thoroughly mixed and you're assuming that that happens basically uh, instantaneously. So if, for example, this is a reaction which is very, very fast, it takes around 10 to the minus third seconds for a reaction vessel to completely mix if you have some, say, aqueous solution, for example. So it takes about, a, takes about a millisecond for these things to mix, and if this reaction occurs on the time scale of microseconds, uh, then that's bad to use. So there are other methods that you have to use. You can't use either of these necessarily unless you can uh, mix your reactants faster than that. And those are other methods which I may or may not talk about here called relaxation methods. Um, but those are some more advanced experimental techniques. But this is kind of the general way and uh, some the basic way that you could use to uh, measure and then calculate what your rate law is for a given reaction.